Look at that. The enclosed is back. It's here. And the plow trucks are sitting there. The open trailer's gone. I went and picked up. I'm changing these. I'm changing these up, by the way. You guys know I did these last year. I'm going to change the word countryside. I already have them printed out downstairs. That's going to be white. And then the email address is going to go on the bottom here, which is going to be white. And the same thing back here. I'm going to tear the email address off there. It's going to be white. I'm taking this one off. That's going to be white. I want to break it up. My wife likes it like this. She says it looks good with... I need the other keys. She says it looks good with the green like that. All the green and the black. I'm not a fan. I'm really not. I want... What am I doing? I want it to be broken up a little bit. I want some other colors there. I have different keys. See, these keys have my tag to get into my gym. And then this set of keys, you're getting like total face up, close up. It's scary, right? But anyway, these have the keys of this trailer. So what I'm going to do is Hold that thought. So look what's in here. Dirty as hell, aren't they? There's the Ferris 48. And there's the Great Dane. There's that mount that I welded on there for the leaf pusher that I built last year that I don't like. So it's going away. I'm getting rid of that leaf pusher. And what I'm going to do is... Oh, see this fork right here? Look at it. It's bent. It's like kinked that way. I don't know how it got bent, but I've looked everywhere online. And I cannot find one of those. So anyway, I'm changing a couple things up. I'm going to heat that up and I'll bend it back. So I'll get that. I'm not so concerned with that. I'll still get it so the deck will ride right. It's still a great cutting machine. I don't know how the hell that got bent, but anyway, I'm going to get it fixed. If I can find one of those, I'll buy a new one, but I just can't. I found them in one place, Jack's Small Engine Repair. Or something like that, but that guy's a rip off. I've ordered stuff from there in the past when I had no choice and had to get it, but he wants two hundred and thirty dollars for that arm. He's an idiot. But anyway, so I'm gonna cut that mount off and I'm gonna grind that down. I'll just shoot it with some paint and I'm gonna the weed whacker rack I had on there last year. And then I end up not using it nearly as much as I thought I would. When I had the last Great Dane and I had the weed whacker rack on there, I used it a lot. But which is why I put that back on there or on this newer this great name man i can't talk today anyway that's why i put that on there and it turns out i never uh i didn't use it at all last year like i thought i was gonna um i'm gonna build some new shelves you guys know i used to have a full shelf in here and i took it down because i needed the room and it, uh this is only a 14 foot trailer with a two foot v nose so but it's not a, so it's kind of like a you know the 14 ends at this line right here and you have an extra two foot but it's not a full two foot obviously because it's the v nose anyway i'm going to build another shelf in here but it's just going to be a lot higher in a smaller one than what i had before so anyway um this one is getting sold too I sold this once before to a buddy of mine, and if you watched my videos last year, it shows that I bought it back because I got that account back where I really needed it. But anyway, um, this is going. I am selling this, and so I need to get it cleaned up, get the oil changed in it. I'm selling it with the two-wheel Valky on it because now I have the 61, which you guys have not seen yet, but you will. So anyway, um, this needs cleaned up, washed up, oil changed, so it's ready to go for the new owner. And that's that. This one will be ready to go. That one, I have to get that mount off. Weed whacker mounts off. I have to clean that whole thing up. That still needs an oil change. New fuel filter. You guys know I do fuel filters every year. Um, so that all needs done on that one. And what else? That tire's low. I'll have to look into that as well. But... So that needs done on that one, and then uh, and I have to do the new hydro pump. It's on this side. I think I showed you guys that at the end of last year. It's leaking like crazy, um, but I have the new one. I've had it since October. I just got to change that. 
see this lock? Proven Industries. This is a tongue lock for a trailer. This goes up into the hole where the ball would go and then you lock the latch down over it and it stays in there. Then you slide this whole thing over top of it and you put this lock on. Pretty neat, huh? Brian from Brian's Maintenance sent this to me. Now, I finally got a chance to use it and I put it on my trailer and here is here are my thoughts. You guys know me. You know, I try not to insult anybody or hurt anybody's feelings, but I say what people need to hear versus what they want to hear. Just because I want people to be the same way with me. Anyway, um, I think it's a phenomenal product and I definitely see its worth. It's great. You, There's no way you're cutting through that thing like you can with some of these cheaper versions um, like this one. And I've seen people cut through those with battery-powered Milwaukee Sawzalls. I'm not even kidding. Cut right through them. Um, so and there's a lot of other cheaper versions out there that you can cut right through. That one there by Proven Industries, you're not breaking through it. So it definitely is what they say it is. Um, I looked at it really well, and I've done things with fabrication and shop work, things like that. I've used every tool you can imagine. And I'm telling you right now, much less of a torch, you're not getting through that. I could cut through it with a torch, but that's going to take time. And who's bringing a torch, a set of torches along to steel trailer? It's not happening. Um, and you're not whacking that thing off with a sledgehammer. It's just, it's not happening. So is it as strong as they say? Absolutely. It definitely is exactly what they say. So kudos to them for that. Here's my problem. Um... I will look it up again before I post this video and I'll clarify to be exact. But when Brian first sent that to me, I looked it up online and I can't remember exactly what it was. I'm pretty damn sure that thing was 300 bucks or 280 or something like that, okay? $300 for that lock. Um, now they say you can't really put a value on your tools and you want your tools in your trailer locked up and you can't really put a value on that you know are your tools and stuff worth more than three hundred dollars well obviously yes so that's the uh the ploy or the guilt trip so to speak that they're giving you to justify their pricing and the reason i say that is because i contacted a buddy of mine who has been in manufacturing and custom fabrication for over 20 years and i said you know all BS aside, what, what would it cost to actually make one of these? You know, what, what's the cost that goes into it? You know, I know there's a lot of other side costs like marketing for their product and insurances and this and that. I get all that. But I wanted to know what the actual cost was to actually fabricate this lock. And so I sent them a bunch of different pictures of it, the breakdown of it, everything. And, uh, and he said, technically, materials, machine for the mold, like pouring it in the mold and, and actually running off one of those. And, you know, if you heat it to afterwards to harden it, to strengthen it, he said, altogether, 30 bucks, 40 maybe to make one of those. He goes, if you have this set up for it like they do, you know, like, like Proven Industries does, um, they, they're probably running those locks off for 30 40 bucks a lock maybe even cheaper than that um so i mean that just stuff like that irks me i understand there's a markup on things and i understand people have to make money but how much how much is enough that's my full take on it but as far as it being exactly what they say and as strong as what they say absolutely i i think that uh it will do exactly what they say it will do and it is as strong as they say so decide what you want to do from there. This is what I use. No spill, five gallons. Um, it's just the kind I use, and I like them. So um, I know there's going to be that one person that's going to comment, you should use the sure can, man. Um, okay, thanks for your comment. But again, I use no spill, and that's what I'm sticking with. Um, the only thing that wasn't no spill was my two and a half gallon can for my premix. And I found these the other day. They were on sale for 20 bucks at Tractor Supply. So I finally bought one.
right through them enough to take them off these ones here I cut through one side and then I just wiggle it back forth to break it off same thing with that one there so now I'll just change the cutoff wheel that I have on there to a uh, grinding wheel I'll grind them down smooth and what I'll do is uh, I'll spray a little bit of primer on them it's not gonna do a heck of a lot it's cold out here it's only like 34 35 degrees out but I'll spray them with a little bit of primer just for something to sit on there so they don't start rusting up bad and then when the weather's nice and I wash this thing I'll hit them with some paint See, nice and simple, nice and smoothed out. Well, a little rough on that one. I'll clean that up a little more, get a little of that rust off that one. But they're smooth. I rounded the edges off. Same thing on that one back there. But it literally took less than, I don't know, if you total it up, less than two minutes to cut those off there and to smooth them back out. So, like I said, I believe I mentioned it in the fall when I did these. And then sometime last summer, whatever, when I put this one on there for the trimmer, I said, you know, if I decide I don't want I'll just cut the weld, grind it down smooth, and paint it. And that's exactly what I'm doing, ironically. But, yeah. So that's that. This here, the way it bolts, I, I never noticed it before, but you can turn this whole thing. And I'm thinking that maybe it got turned and that's why maybe this thing isn't really bent because it doesn't really look bent but the wheel's sitting bent. So the caster could just be bent and not the actual arm. Kind of like what happened on my walker. Or these might just be loose and I can turn these to compensate for that. I don't know. I'll play around with it before I go buying any parts but I just noticed that. ran that clamp on there uh, 10 mil wrench these are almost always 10 mil wrench I've seen them a little different um, I think once or twice but nine times out of ten they're 10 mil wrench that's ironic so oil pan I drop the deck all the way down to its lowest setting I stick that in there I try not to let it come up and touch the bottom of the muffler and once you break that free you can usually do this by hand sometimes you can sometimes you can't but back here throwing wrenches around so just crank this bad boy out um, gotta be careful I usually they'll come out and then they'll stop you um, once it starts to get hard to come out it's done um, see it's already coming out of there the oil even though it's up in an angle if I push it down it's gonna come out faster see that's pretty black and nasty but um, See how it's barely coming out? I have seen those you back them off too far and they will come out all the way. Um, it's barely coming out because it has no air behind it. So what I do is I unscrew. Well, I can do it from this side. I unscrew this dipstick. Pull it out of there. So air can get in behind it. Now look, it's flowing free flowing I usually have a rag or something set aside that I put this on but I didn't think that far ahead so let's just uh, set it right here in the stone and I'll clean it off after before I put it back in but see even up at an angle it's like free flowing now and that's because there's air coming in behind it so I'll just hold this down so it'll flow out easier and that worked pretty good We'll let this oil drain out and then I will be back in a minute and we'll get to the next step. Okay, so that's pretty much done. I closed the valve back up 
And just hold this down for a second to get any last few drops off. I got a rag because I know as soon as I take that off, you're going to get a couple drops down. Really nothing you can do about that. But I'd rather wipe up a couple drops and clean oil out of this whole freaking thing. So, on my old rigid here, a little 8 mil for that clamp. So, I can take that. I don't have to reach in over the socket and turn it a hundred times. I could just, there we go, loosen right up. Now I can pull that right off there. Eh, nothing's coming out. It will get a drip or two. They're going to come out, but no big deal. This was a beautiful idea. How's that for an ingenious idea? I was sitting there looking at it and I was thinking, why don't I just go grab a piece of tin foil and kind of make a V out of it? Huh, look at that. Worked out good. So, this is one of those new filters. They put plastic on them. That I told you I ordered by the case. See? And we will. A little oil on the finger and put it on the seal. I mean, it's just common sense. You do that with an oil filter on anything. And we will screw this bad boy on there and then take our paint marker and mark the hours on it. So that one's on there. And what I was thinking of doing is writing the hours on there uh, before I put the filter on, but my luck i'd write them on there and i'd screw it on and by the time it got to where it needs to be the position it needs to be where the filter's tight it would all be upside down it would look ridiculous and uh it would just make it harder to read anyway let's see how many hours we got 1339.8 so we'll round that off and we will put 1340 one three four Zero. 1340. And that's that. Now we just pour oil in it and we are good to go. This one is the same as the other ones. Like I told you, I use uh, 1040. It's Kawasaki engine. I use 1040 and everything, but um, 1040 and it takes one full quart and then all the way down to the that gonna stay there that'd be really cool if it did okay so we pour in one full quart and then we pour a second one in all the way down to the eight ounce mark so there's only eight ounces left in it and then that's almost perfect every single time on all my engines this is a 19 horse it's a 22 horse on the skag um, it's a 23 horse on one of my walkers and a 19 horse on the other walker and I put the exact same amount in every time and it comes out exactly the same. So that's pretty much that. So thanks for watching guys. Um, I know this video was kind of all over the place today. Very random. But you know it's the beginning of the season. There's no grass to mow and the season hasn't kicked off yet. We had green grass as you saw. It was really warm. It was in the 50s. Getting ready to kick off the season. And then we got dumped down with 14 inches of snow in less than 9 hours. So... Now it's back to doing more maintenance, getting stuff ready to go. Oh, real quick, you guys wanted to know. I can't remember exactly what I paid for it. I want to say it was like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something for 12 oil filters. But anyway, these are the ones I use. Russo, part number L32. And it is 
goes on this Kawasaki 19 horse. I put one on that Kawasaki 22 horse. It goes on my 19 horse Kohler and my 23 horse Kohler. It's the same filter. It screws on all of them. They have the same exact threads. So I use the same filter in every one of them. But that's the part number because some of you guys asked me for it. And that's that. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next one.